The Sports County Report with Libra King, brought to you by Harvey Autos in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you've trusted for years, Geico, the insurance savings you expect, Supreme Chevrolet, expect more from Supreme Automotive Group in Gonzales, Creed and Creed Law Firm, serious attorneys, for serious injuries. Bollinger Shipyards, 75 years of delivering high-quality vessels. Here's your host, Lee Bertine. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Craig Jones, head football coach, Mandeville High School. Coach, glad to be here. It's uh, hot but not humid. It's hat day. Tell me about hat day. Uh, so hat day is something we started, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago now, where we get the win the week before. Instead of doing our walkthrough on Thursdays, the boys get to wear hats as opposed to wearing their helmets. So just, you know, a small little, uh, small little treat for getting a win. I took some pictures of those hats, <laughs> so we can use that in the show. Um, you off to a really good start. I won't even say the record because you're undefeated now after a few games. I don't know when this will air, but great year so far. A lot of, lot of games left, but what do you think of this year and uh, th this team, particularly this year? It's been a good start. You know, we, we have a lot of guys who, when we got here a couple years ago, started for us as sophomores. So we have a lot of three-year experience. And um, it's paid off for us and our ability to be, you know, a little more detailed with our game plans, a little more detailed with just our scheme um, in general. and. Um, I think now also with our younger guys who have come up behind them, um, them being a little more comfortable in the scheme as well has allowed us to bring more to the table on Friday nights. Coach Jones, I mean, the, the, I was asked by this by a few media guys in New Orleans, and I went to your one of your games last year at Walker, but Shepard at running back has really taken the state by storm, it seems. Um, what do you think about the year he's having? I know he's committed to Duke. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm hearing, and you could maybe answer this even better, but he's really loves Duke from what I'm hearing uh, as a commitment. Yeah, you know, look, he's a, he's a phenomenal player. And, and he affects the game in all three phases. And, you know, that running back, obviously, with the number of uh, touchdowns and everything he's had, his yardage. But you know, he starts first at safety. He's on all of our special teams. And, and he's made impact plays in all three phases. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing for him in regards to, to go, you know, making his decision to commit to Duke is he's one of the kids in, in all the years that I've done it that was probably the most detailed and thorough of going through the process, having an older brother who went through that process, having parents who played at the D1 level. He, um, you know, he had all that built in, and I think it really helped him do, do the process correctly and, and come up with the decision of what was the best fit for him. You know, I think he's going to yeah. thrive there. Incredible player. Um, Will Shepard, his brother's a pretty good player this mm -hmm. year, too. Uh, and your kicker, man, you, your kicker's got a great future ahead of him. He's committed to Virginia Tech, but you said other schools are still calling him. Yeah, yeah, look, and, and he's had a good year. He's had a great year, actually, so far. Um, Creighton, right? Creighton, Creighton Wilbanks, yeah. yeah. Um, another key, he's kicked since he was a freshman. He's been a kicker for the varsity, and he's gotten a little stronger every year. And um, he's, a, he's a soccer player as well, uh, but he's really, probably the last two years, has really dedicated himself to, to his craft of kicking. And, and you can see the dividends pay off in, in just his power, his accuracy, um, not being phased by the big moments when you got to make the kick. Um, he's been able to handle all that. So he's got a bright future beyond here as well. Uh, Coach, I want to throw a name out to help you, and I know that you like him a lot. He's not even 100%. He's a tough kid for your tight end that's a senior who's really, you know, looks the part and uh, was a wide receiver, I noticed a little bit as a junior, played like inside, outside. Yeah. But you've got a really good senior tight end. Tell everybody about this kid. Yeah, so Parker Leno. So Parker started for us as, uh, or didn't start for us as a sophomore, but he was a receiver for us as a sophomore. And then as he continued to grow and get bigger and get thicker and was, was great blocking on the perimeter, we started moving him inside the tight end at wing. Um, and he was a huge part of our success going into the playoffs last year. Um, we made the wholesale change to put him at tight end or wing and really kind of ran the ball behind him, Reagan touchstone, 
uh, Blaze Blackwell, you know, Nick Averett, all the guys that we have back right now. Um, but we were able to kind of run the ball behind them. Brooks Lang uh, was another one of our tackles last year who's back. Uh, but Parker was that catalyst of, of really making that that playoff run last year. And then, um, you know, he's banged up right now, but we got him back. We've had him back for the last two weeks, and we're just managing his time. And, um, you know, I'd like to think he's going to be a big piece of what we do moving forward. And a lot of people don't talk about your D-line, but you have a very good defensive line here with the senior Juan uh, mm -hmm. and then Zanon, who's a junior. Mm -hmm. Those two guys in particular, I mean, they've been catalysts for this program with already a couple of years each. One, what, Juan's three years, huh? Uh, yeah, Juan's a three-year starter. Marcus is a junior. He's, a, he's in his second year starting for us. Um, they, they really control things on the inside. You know, um, they could play everywhere. They could both yeah. play defensive end. They, could, they can do it all, but, but their, their first step is special. Um, they do a really good job with their technique, playing with their hands. Um, they understand the scheme and what we're trying to do and, and make plays that maybe if they're initially out of position, they're able to get in and make a play. Um, so having two of those guys in there is a luxury. I want to ask you this before my last question is that you still have a player that you coached at Lakeshore that's still in college at UL. Yeah. And it seems like he's been there 10 years, but he was all world for you, Lake Shore. I think yeah. it helped you go to the dome one year. Yeah, 2017. Tell everybody about this young man who stuck it through at uh, so, UL. Jacob Bernard was, <laughs> was a senior for us in, in uh, 2017, class of 2018. Yeah. Um, went to UL and has worked his way, you know, you know, through the ranks. You know, paid his dues and is one of the main guys over there now. Got to be proud of him. Oh, okay. extremely proud of him. His two younger brothers are uh, playing at Nichols. We yeah. actually went. We actually went and watched Nichols play LSU, and um, Zach Bernard, who was was All State for us on the defensive line, is starting at nose guard for Nichols. Um, so it was really cool to see them play. And then Ryan's Ryan's a younger guy, so we didn't know if he was going to get in. And then Nichols wound up having an injury at their guard position, and, and Ryan got in and played. So it was really cool to see those guys get in and play at Tiger Stadium, and and um, got to send them a couple texts and check in on them and it's always nice when you get your guys having success at the next level. I was at that game and there was a point where I thought Guggenheim was going to win yeah. the game from yeah. Curtis, right? Yep. The old quarterback from mm -hmm. JT's quarterback. And last question, you're a graduate. A lot of people might not know that are not from this area, but you graduated from Mandeville High School. What, how does it feel to be back? It's, as, it's, it's neat, man. It's, it's um, you know, with what we established at Lakeshore, and I, I had a large portion of my staff come with me here, um, it was really hard to leave there. And if there was one school that I would have made the decision to, to leave Lakeshore for was here. Um, and when we did make the move, you know, it took a, it took a bit to get the transition in place. But um, it's really neat to now be, I'm, I'm coaching kids of guys I played with. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's it's really neat, Pretty it's cool. cool. Um, and then just being back at home, my kids are, go to school here and you know, my wife is a graduate from here. So, you know, we've always tried to make it a, a family atmosphere, but having all that around us makes it that much easier. Coach, good luck to you the rest of the year. And I, I know that y'all have a chance to uh, do special things this year. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for watching the Sports Scouting Report with Lieber Team.